basic instinct. Was it your basic instinct to get a little jealous? Is that what we're seeing, Miss Kenya? Did you get a little jealous? And was that your basic instinct, sis? Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Real Housewives of Atlanta season 13, episode 10. What happened down to the dungeon? <laughs> Baby! <laughs> Listen! It went down. There was a lot that went on. I'm telling you now. Look, if you have to, feel free to pause this video. Don't turn it off. Come in close. Don't turn it off. But you can pause this video. Go get yourself something to drink because we're going to be here for a minute. Yep. So much to talk about. Look at that. So much to talk about. Let me tell you something. When I do my reviews, I never, ever usually go over. It's one page. And I write the whole notes for a whole hour show. And I'm, you know, because all I write down is what's stuck out. So I don't forget it. Just bullet points. Now, if it's a scripted show, like how to get away with murder, where there's plot twists and all these different names, though. Then you make it onto a second page sometime, but never for a reality show. Not even at a reunion time do you get, baby, they gave us a show last night. We got some things to talk about, children. Let's get started. Now, I thought it was very cute, very cute how they did this whole workup of basic instinct, and we had... Kenya Moore sitting in the whole Sharon Stone role and she opened the show with a confessional she says someone screwed the stripper and I'm going to find out who did it. Now I thought it was a joke. Like I said, it's cute. Well I'll be damned. Somebody really did screw the stripper. Now I, 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 I said, well wait a minute. Hold on. Somebody really did screw the stripper. And I got a good idea who it is that I'm going to say. But I I had to stop myself for a minute. I said, oh, hold on, James. Pull yourself together, boy. What is you? We talking about this ain't just any old stripper. First of all, he's not a stripper. He is an exotic dancer. And there is a difference. He ain't low budget. He ain't you know, all raggedy and crusty. Baby, listen, Bolo, for all intents and purposes, is an exotic dancer, honey. And it is something about the fact you said you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> listen! Ain't no stripper shit. It's a whole experience, honey. That, that Bolo, get, Bolo take you where you need to go. You understand? Listen, I've been following his career for quite a few years. That young man is talented. Very talented dancer. Very serious about what he does. I've seen him in roles, doing things, you know, as far as reality television and all of this. That body, he works on that body. Like, he ain't just built like that just to be built like that. And, I mean, the looks, he can't do nothing about the looks. The looks are what they are. He keeps himself, he really does put work into his brand. So I really, me personally, I didn't like how they kept down talking him like he wasn't shit. I didn't like that. Me personally. He is an entertainer, okay? And I have respect for him as an entertainer. I laugh and I kiki and all of that. But he is a brand. Bolo is a brand. He's a brand. And he makes a good amount of money. You hear me? Bolo could sell out a room. 
And again, he he built up like a circus act. I like it. I like it. it. It's nice. It's nice. He's nice. He's nice to look at. It is what it is. And he ain't just nice to look at. He actually can move and he's entertaining. Y'all seen it? Y'all seen it. And if you say you wasn't like this, you lying. You lying. You lying. Because before I got off last week, I told y'all, Child, it's, bolo, it's the Bolo experience. You better pay attention. I already had told you. If you didn't know about Bolo, I had already told you. And y'all been watching me long enough to know I ain't going up just to be going up. Because I actually prefer female strippers to male strippers. But that Bolo is an exception. That Bolo is yum yum shit now. So y'all knew. I told you. So I didn't like how they kind of like downplayed him. And then there was like little stuff said about his costume and stuff. I didn't like none of that. I, I was like, what's what's up with that? Because in a confessional, um, that damn Marlo talked about his fake Chanel. Okay, we all know that it wasn't an actual Chanel. Co Stop it. Stop it. It was what it was. Say what you like. The costume was cute. It was cute. It, it it looked good on television. It came across very cool on television. It didn't look cheap. It, it was put together. It was cool. It really was cool. And the brother looked good. Now, not just, come on, it is what it is. Even if you didn't like the, the, the little jacket, you liked the pants. Didn't. You know you like the pants, Joe. Like, <laughs> anyway, but listen, so go ahead, Marlo, shut on that. But anyway, so um, let me say this. So, so we covered that bolo stuff. Candy did an excellent job. Because you remember when we left out, all the girls were getting their outfits. Candy had given their given them their outfits. She told them, go to your rooms, change to your outfits. She took time and effort, but that's Candy. Candy's a perfectionist. She really put thought into the girls' outfits. Each girl's outfit really did match their swag and their all-around persona. Um, even down to Drew. Drew had that bullshit on. That bullshit was Drew. That old funny blouse and them funny furry boots. She's looking like a club kid, but sexy. And she did look sexy. Every last one, and you know I'm critical, and you know I give the girls a hard time. I'm going to say this. Every female Every female in that group looked fantastic. At all the ages, all the shapes, they looked sexy. They were really living their best life. They were happy. It was a joy to watch. It really was. This is one of those times when they really were having a great time and they all really looked good. They looked good. They were all true to character. Candy, you did that. You did that. And then the whole thing, they had Cynthia come down. Then they sent Cynthia, you know, they surprised her. And then sent her butt back upstairs and put her in an outfit. And all their outfits was black. Uh, she let Kenya be Kenya. Kenya was put in red latex because, you know, it was her trip. So they put her in red latex. And this little whore. I said, Kenya, girl, you was filling your puss 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 puss. She's rubbing her coochie all over the, the floor like an old cat. That's that old girl. Calm down. Calm down, you old kitty cat, honey. She's rubbing her cooch all over the furniture and all over the floor. 
Don't brush burn yourself, sis. But she was just laying on the back of the, laying on this part of the sofa, open her legs, and I said, okay, Kenya, I guess, girl, you, we could tell you ain't had a little, not much in a long time. But I'm going to say right from the beginning, right from the beginning, I think Miss Miss Moore got in her feelings a little bit because you are playing this role of sugar mama to Miss Latoya. Say what you like. There's a whole lesbian situation going on there. And by the way, the lesbian energy here, we don't even need to have the conversation going forward anymore. We don't. We don't. Everybody on this cast is down. And that's it. I don't even need to mention it no more. I don't have to bring up the lesbian energy in Real Housewives of Atlanta anymore. I am convinced every lady on here is down with the lady pawn, honey. And they all got a little going on, honey. And it, it just, it is what it is. So what's known don't have to be mentioned. So we ain't even got to say nothing no more. Child, all you girls get into lesbonics, honey. All of you. I said, look at them, honey. They was lined up, baby, looking good, honey. I said, check them out, honey. Fembots, all of you, honey. Fembots, honey. I'm online. I'm on board. I'm here for it, honey. I said, come on here, girls. So they was all set up. They put um, Kenya in red, because it's her trip, so they let her stand out. You know, she loves to stand out. They put Cynthia in all white and brought her back down and put her on some um, panties that had a vibrating panty insert. And Candy had the remote control. I said, girl, Candy, you and Cynthia, I ain't gonna do it again, y'all. Y'all know, y'all know what it is, honey. I was like, oh, okay. Portia, Girl, you are aggressive, but we knew that because let's go back. Let's do a history lesson. You remember Portia, Portia allegedly told Candy, honey, I want to eat your box until you ready in my face, honey. So Portia gives you very um, aggressive big dick energy, honey, and so does Latoya. And I think, I think, did you feel a sense of competition, Miss Kenya, when it came to Portia? And did you feel a little bit of inadequacy when it came to Shamia? Huh? Possibly? Hmm? See, because uh, Shamia, Candy, and Portia are like the Trinity. <laughs> Honey, them three freaks are us. And I think it, it it probably felt to you like one of those you you kind of you you get in where you fit in and you don't compete where you don't compare. And you're old. You're an old bitch. And you ain't got nothing for them young girls. So, you know, on this night. Toy was like a kid in the candy store. And I think at some point there, I think you got in your feelings a little bit. But that's just me. Y'all tell me in the comments what you think. I think she got in her feelings a little bit. And the things that came later, you know, contributed to how you act because you know how you are. Anyway, so listen to this. Portia was on it. Hey, she was doing all that stuff that she said. Portia made a comment and said, one of you bitches is going to eat me tonight. That's a, okay, girl. All right. So they did what they did with Bolo and he did his little thing and all of that and all of that, okay? And uh, Portia went back, honey, and told him, can you come out and um, come back out and party? Just party? He said, come out for what? She's like, just come on out and party. He's like, what, is the camera day still filming? She's like, no, ain't gonna be no cameras. Now, let me tell you what I saw earlier on because this is gonna all work in when we get to toward the end of this review. I noticed something early on. I've told you all that I follow Bolo, honey, and I've seen Bolo in different situations. I've seen Bolo on other reality shows. You understand me? 
Oh, Portia had Bolo's eye early on. Did y'all notice when Portia, she was just drunk. She was drunk. And remember when she fell down in front of him and he helped her up and stuff? He was very attentive to Portia. And I mean, y'all know I ain't no real big Portia fan, but bitch sharp. She really, I mean, Portia's sharp and you can't get around it. It is what it is. She She's sharp. Sharp. That is what it is. And he, 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 he had a little eye for Portia. And early on during his little performance, she rolled back on him and he put that big old beat hey, on him up against his wing wall, honey. And he was like, girl, you so crazy. I said, got him. Got him. And she twisted her little self out and she... I said, come on, Miss Portia. And listen... Kenya was the one calling. Oh, dick hungry Kenya. Kenya over there thirsty, honey. That's old thirsty Tina, honey. So we want more boho, honey. I said, girl, let's look, look at grandma, honey. Want some of it, honey. Because her girlfriend wasn't paying her no attention. Her girlfriend was all in Portia's face. All in Portia's face. And Shamia just has a whole vixen energy about her at all times. You can just watch Shamia. It's so natural for Shamia. Same as it is for Candy. Same as it is for Candy. Because Candy always has a sexual energy about her. Always. She may not be your type or whatever, but Candy walks with a whole sexual energy at all times. She can't turn it off. Her and Todd. Todd, too. That's why we love Todd and Candy together. Because the two of them, you just look at them and be like, you know them two little smurfs be getting down, honey. You just you just want to, I just want to work the light switch, honey, and see what's going on. You know you know they be getting down. They be getting down, honey. And poor Chuck. I ain't telling nobody that I ain't never believed all the stuff that Candy was saying. I don't believe, you know, about the rape and all that. But all this getting down and kissing and licking and carrying on, honey, y'all, and y'all come back now, you hear? Anyway, so Portia strutted back there, Miss Lizzie, honey, after Kenya was like, we want more boho, honey. She went back there and told Kenya, come on, honey. Yeah, the camera's just going to go. We just want to have some fun. And he was like, okay. He was down. He was down. I said, I know he is. I know he is, honey. Going to hang out all night. Went on down there, baby. They relieved the crew, covered the cameras in the house. There was one camera out on the porch that was still glaring through the window. I don't know if they forgot it or if they, you know, you know, they play games with us and give us what we need for a show. But, you know, you couldn't see but so much. You see a little bit. Um, and all that. Then they put, can they put that damn Cynthia in the sex swing. Child, you see how Candy rolled up on Cynthia between her legs and started popping her. I said, girl, boy, I mean, the Les Bonnix was at a whole high, honey. I said, girl. She ran up on there and banged her. I said, Miss Candy, let me find out, girl. Let me find out, girl, that your strap on game is strong, honey, with a K, honey, strong. Because you ran up on uh, Miss Cynthia, honey, and banged her out like, I said, girl, my. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. And Miss Toya is very um, aggressive as well. She was rolling up on Candy, honey. And Candy had told her, she said, girl, she said, what about the camera? She said, yeah, we need them to get on out of here so we can really have some fun. And she's like, girl, she said, um, girl, I don't give a fuck about them cameras, child. Because you know Candy don't. Candy don't care. I was like, oh my gosh. Then Kenya was really feeling herself. Like I said, she's all on the carpet and carrying on. But yeah, but girl, she had no control over her little um, her little pup, honey. Miss uh, Latoya was like, honey, ooh, let me at it, let me at it, honey. She didn't... Let me at it, honey. Let me at it all, honey. I said, oh my. So now listen, here we go to this after party. Kenya, her baby was there. So her baby come back. So Kenya goes on upstairs. But Kenya... I'm going to call you out on some of your mess. All this stuff leading up to this. All that mess just about Brooklyn being in the house and all that, how you couldn't come down and play the game with the girls the night before and all that old bullshit. And that's exactly what it was with some old bullshit. Because as we go forth, we found out, girl, you spent all night up and down the steps, Nevin. You spent all night up and down the steps hating and swallowing bets. 
You was peeping around corners. You was giving peeping Thomasina, honey, trying to see what everybody else was doing. Collecting information is what you were doing. And this ain't even what that was all about. This was about having a good time. You run around collecting information. You're a whole hot ass mess. And you are the type of bitch that don't nobody want to hang with. Don't nobody want to hang with you. Don't nobody want to hang with nobody that's going to be telling. I mean, these women have husbands and different things like that. Ain't nobody trying to do all that. Like, like that, that just ain't cool. It just ain't cool. I mean, I'm going nowhere with her. Anyway, moving on. But she was running around trying to get, slickly get intel. That's what she was doing. And you was hating. You was hating. Because just like you was leaving Brooklyn upstairs and going down there swallowing bets and trying to see who else was swallowing whatever, honey. And they was swallowing, honey. You was, girl, you was taking it all as this one had their teddy out and that one did. A mess. Listen, so let me tell you a little bit of what was going on, honey. We were seeing, honey, listen, Miss Drew. Honey, Miss Drew was bent over, over, at one point she was bent over a coffee table, baby, taking it from the back, honey. With her clothes on. You know, they all had their turn at Bolo, honey. Bolo Bolo worked them all out a little bit. He grinded on all of them, honey. And um, Portia and Latoya was just straight up just getting down. You know how they were doing, doing the, the white girl thing, honey. Oh, we were, we were making out. They were having sex, honey. They was getting down, honey. They was over there bumping cat, honey. It was bumping cat and kissing real hard, all on the couch, honey, and the camera caught them. You seen them all laid back. I said, child, you, they was laid back. It was giving less bonics, honey. They was bumping pocketbooks and losing change all over that couch, honey. I well, because, you know, later on, you know, Marlo said, I couldn't even sleep on I know you couldn't. That couch was just as wet and crunchy in the morning, honey. I said, ew. All right, girl. They was getting down them, too. I said, yeah, Kenya, Kenya was mad, honey. She had jerked that girl. Of course, you got your man. I'm gone, girl. Anyway, Cynthia was over there. She had to go get her a close-up on Bolo's piece, honey. And I believe she was feeling it. She was touching it because he had told her all this time you was think, thinking this stuff is going to be real. This, that, and he was telling her it's very much real. It is, child. It is. Of course, she was over there feeling on it and stuff, honey. I said, okay. So that was that. Now, um, and like I said, they was taking their turns and he was grinding on them and stuff. Then there was a point where you heard Tanya and Portia kept trying to egg her on and she was like, girl, I can't go with Bolo. I can't, mm -mm, I can't do that. Girl, I will get into real trouble. And Portia was like, yes, you can, girl. Yes, you can. Come on, girl. Yes, you can. Egging her on, honey. Okay. Then we heard Bolo say to Portia, said to Portia now, as long as I got a face, you always got somewhere to sit. And listen to me. That's where I told y'all. I I knew it. I was like, oh, and Portia was giggling. Wee, wee. I told y'all that earlier in the night, I felt like he was feeling Portia. He was talking to Portia. And Portia giggled. I said, okay. All right, now. So listen. Everything was everything. Everybody did whatever it was they was going to do. Portia. No. Kenya. Kenya gets up in the morning and then she starts talking. She's all over there. She's in her confessionals and all that. She starts talking. She, Kenya tells us she heard something, some noises and some moans and groans and some music in the extra, extra bedroom. It was a small extra bedroom down the hallway. This bedroom sat in between Candy and Portia's room, and then that room was here, right across, slanted across the hall, was the kitchen. Kenya was in the kitchen at 6 a.m. and heard some moans and groans and said she heard somebody in there getting down. And she said, somebody's in there getting down, stripper, honey. As you know, there were comments where she said she heard somebody saying, F this P, honey. And F this P harder, Addy. I said, oh. And she ended up saying later on, she knew one of the voices was Portia, but she couldn't make out what the other voice was. So we got two people. We know Portia was one of them. 
which nobody cares because to screw Dennis, Portia can screw whoever she wants. Portia is single. Portia, I ain't mad at you, girl. Listen. Listen. Girl, did he sling that hook your way, girl? Then call Portia Captain Hook, honey. I ain't mad at her, girl. You did just what you were supposed to do, sis. Did you want it? Were you hungry? You did exactly what you were supposed to do, girl. Pump him back, honey. I ain't got no problem with what Portia did. Now, there was another individual in there, okay? So she didn't know who that was. And then we seen video. We saw video footage of Bolo leaving, honey, at 7.06 a.m., honey. He was going on out of the, uh, walking on out of the house down to the Uber, honey. And he was looking quite satisfied. Quite. He had a little pep in his step at 7 a.m. after being up all night, honey. I said, come on, Bolo. Listen, he's physically fit, honey. I'm sure he was feeling fine, honey. He went right on. He did what he was supposed to do, honey. Mm -hmm. You living for the moment. So that was that. So then there was this conversation with Cynthia and Drew, okay? And they both were basically talking, and Cynthia, Drew was like, you want to tell Mike? She's like, yeah, girl, I'm going to tell him, but I'm going to tell him face-to-face. -face. I ain't going to tell him over this phone that, you know, what she did, that she basically touched it and seeing it up close and all that. And Drew was like, yeah, me too. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tell my dude, because um, I don't need nobody start no trouble with me, honey. We're going to tell our mates what we did. And that was that. So a little bit after that, they come down, and as the girls are starting to get their self together, Kenya come down, Candy's down, her Candy's like up, and she said, uh, she started throwing out some hints about what she had experienced and what she heard. And I see on Candy's face, Candy didn't appreciate it. She's like, mm -mm. then I'm going to say this, because when it comes to these, these situations, Candy's like a dude. Candy reminds me of like a teenage or a dude in his, his early 20s. I believe like Candy is and Todd are like best friends. They give me loving basketball tees. Like, shit, Candy and Todd could play some basketball, run a train on a girl, and they just be cool with it. That's just, that's just what their aesthetic is for their relationship, and they get along really good like that. And Candy goes about the sex thing like a dude. Like, she's so detached from it. Like, girl, you don't tell it. It, it is what it is. She, she really got, like, that whole dude spirit. And I'm like, guess God, honey. It is what it is. It's what it's supposed to be when you're doing these kinds of things and you're married and carrying on. So that was that. Um, it was just classic Kenya with the whole, ooh, I got something on somebody type of thing. And I still say that what was fueling it, I think she's a little mad about the toy situation. So, you know, she's a little swole. And she knew that everybody pretty much was walking around and they was all swole, except for her and Marla. Everybody else was a little swollen in their their, their spot, honey. Either from, uh, listen, I, everybody was doing a lot of everything. So, okay, listen, it was what it was, honey. It was a whole lesbian orgy. Anyway, moving on. So, Cynthia and Kenya started talking. And Cynthia was telling her, you know, the girl-on-girl -girl stuff that was going on. I'm like, oh, shiny. So, you know, that just confirmed that it was a lot of stuff going on. Um, and this, Kenya was saying about how she was up and down the steps a few times throughout the night. And she was saying that, you know, she's seen this, she's seen that. And they said they seen like a titty pop out. Tang, one of the titties, Tang's titties was out. And somebody sucked it. And some other stuff was going on. And then Kenya said, yeah, and Bolo's head disappeared. And somebody's cried a few people's crotches too. And Cynthia's like, oh, I didn't see that now. And Kenya admitted that later. Or she's been up and down the steps quite a few times throughout the evening. And she continued on to let her know that girl, Drew, you know, what Drew had said. And then Kenya was like, girl, Drew left some things out, honey. Drew did more than that. Cynthia, I don't know what you saw, but Drew left that out. We found out later on Drew actually had gone to bed, but then came back down. She had left out, you know, some of what she had done. But whatever. So, um, 
listen, so they had half of the girls went to a boating, little boating thing where they actually went out fishing and that, and they actually caught an actual shark, like a small shark, caught a shark, they threw it back, but they caught an actual shark, got it on film. It was Shamia, Tanya, Kenya, Latoya, and Cynthia stayed at the house. Kenya was interrogating them. Before they actually left, yeah, she was interrogating them. Um, Tanya she said to Tanya girl she was like girl I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you some questions girl you know it was like this whole joking thing but when she asked Tanya Tanya came up and started looking very guilty. And she said, girl, I heard you got spanked by a tongue, by someone's tongue, honey. And I saw all this worry in Tanya's face. I said, ooh, okay, okay. So that was that. By this time, the girls start coming back and then they're getting ready for dinner and stuff. Kenya's still going on. Candy says to Kenya, Girl, why are we still talking about this? Why are we still talking about this? Then Shamia and Latoya end up coming around. And that was when they got it up to the Kenya and said, you know, I heard Portia and I don't know who the third person was saying this F me harder and F this P and all of that. Um... They're getting it going. Tanya is starting to be kind of worried. Portia started getting a little pissed about the whole, but she's like, what? Like, we all were having fun. What is all of this? Like, this is crazy. This is crazy. Um, At a point, Toya was like, you know, like, I ain't with this. Like, I don't know, like, what is that about? And they said to her, you know, it was Portia, Shamia, and Tanya, and Latoya was talking, and Latoya was like, you know, I'm now starting to see some of what people are saying about Kenya and all that. This is not cool. Like, I don't like how she's victimizing our good time. Like, we had a good time. Like, we all, like, all the girls are down. Like, we must be holding each other's secrets at this point. At this time, we're not supposed to be doing this. I don't like where she's going. And I'm kind of starting to see the monster that y'all say she is. Um. Yeah. Tamia and Shamia and Portia, before they even met up with Tanya, I mean, with uh, Toya, they was kind of like talking about it. And Portia was like, I'm not giving her none of my energy, child. I'm not getting ready. She ain't going to question me about nothing. I'm, not, I'm just not going to play that game with her at all. I'm not going to do it. So um, there was a point where Cynthia and Marlo had actually talked. And Cynthia had told Marlo she wanted to get her and Kenya together to try to talk out what their problems were. Um, and the fact of the matter is the two of them are really, they both are just tired of fighting with each other, actually. And they actually went to Kenya's room. They end up talking, um, and everything looks good. But then there's a whole nother piece to that, honey. Cynthia ended up walking out the room, leaving them talking, and come to find out, we were, we were the only two that didn't participate in the stuff. Oh, I heard stuff too. Oh, I was down there early in the morning too. Now them two, these two whores that became allies in this bullshit. I said, now Marlo, girl, you get ready to get sucked into some mess with uh, Kenya and the girls ain't going to be liking you. And I'm telling you, you need to leave that alone. Girl, you ain't never going to get no peach. You ain't never going to get no peach, girl, with all that foolishness. So all of that was going on. Um... When it came to confessionals, Portia completely refused to do a confessional with the Real Housewives of, um, of Atlanta. And she also bust out when they was getting ready, get ready for dinner. That's where we was ending. They was getting ready for dinner. And they was trying to get Portia to pray. Portia was like, I ain't in no praying mood. I said, oh, the energy that went left. The energy has gone left and Kenya this is all you're doing 
This is all you're doing. And I was like, girl, is she trying to be funny at first? Or is she serious? She's serious. And I do honestly believe she got in her feelings a little bit, girl, because everybody was having a good time by her. And this is the one thing I'm going to say. And this is, girl, all this leaving Brooklyn and being around the house swallowing bats, girl, you full of shit. And you came across a little creepy. Like, you was just really running around watching people doing their thing. And you just, it just ain't no good look, Kenya. It really ain't. It's not a good look. Tanya, girl, I don't know what's going to happen with you. But this is what I'm going to tell you all that I think went down. Okay? One, I do believe that Drew was a little more salacious than what she said. Yes. I mean, girl, but how can you help it? Um, it is what it is. It's a lot to work with. Go over there and work with it. Smack it around a little bit. Pull on it. Anyway, um, but I believe it was definitely Portia and it was definitely Tanya. The worry in Tanya's face tells her story. Tanya knows where her relationship is um, and I don't think her, her relationship will withstand that. Two, she ain't married. And that might really, I mean, she ain't never planned on getting married, but that, that I don't think her little relationship will withstand it. The issue with that, but um, what I believe, and this is what I believe happened, I don't believe Bolo penetrated Tanya. I don't. I don't believe he penetrated Tanya. I believe Tanya was more or less working the light switch, but I believe she was definitely there for it. I think she was there for it, and I think she did all that she did with Portia. I think her and Portia was getting down. And when it came to the whole penetration of it all, that was Portia taking the meat child. That's what I believe. I don't believe he penetrated Tanya, but I believe that they was all in. Tanya might have gave some old quick head or something, but I think Bola was really there for Portia. And I think Tanya was there for um, moral support and someone to hold her legs. I mean, that's, that's what I believe. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Leave it down in the comments. But just now, this was, baby, this was interesting. This was a lot going on. It was a really good episode, honey. It was a lot, Bola. You went there and shook up that place, honey. Shook up that place with those ladies. But, yeah, old Kenya, girl, you a hater. You was a hater, girl. Anyway, so we'll see how this all falls out and what's all going to happen, honey, because we had dinner and that's where it's said to be continued. I will definitely be there when they continue. I had a good time. I enjoyed it, honey, and I still, I love to meet some bolo, honey. Y'all say what y'all want to say. Anyway, very good, very interesting. It was a lot going on. I'll talk to y'all later, honey. See y'all down there in them comments. Later.